You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome to In a Perfect World, where I explain why it is closer than we might think. I'm Pamela Merritt from The Way of Cats. Today, I'll explain why that cat isn't bad, just misunderstood. When a cat misbehaves, it is because their needs are not being met. Remember that, for a cat, their wants and needs are the same thing. In the natural environment, their instincts would guide them into expressing the proper behaviors. That is how they get a safe place to sleep and a hot dinner. They are survival instincts. This explains why the cat seems so stubborn. This is why people think the cat is doing it on purpose. They are. And they are. But this leads to a mistaken conclusion of, you can't train a cat. We are only having trouble because we are training the cat in the wrong way. How do we know? If we were doing it the right way, it would work. We are right and wrong about the cat. We are right about what they are doing, but we are wrong about why they are doing it. The cat is being stubborn. The cat is doing it on purpose. That is because their survival instincts are telling them their life is at stake. They have to do these things over and over, no matter what. We act the same way when we are convinced our lives are at stake. The key difference is we have created the civilization we live in. The things we have to do are things our world is set up to encourage. We need to eat and we need to get around. So we have created special structures to let us eat in our car. Problem solved. But our cats live in a world they never made. Not the world of nature. There aren't mice scurrying around. There are people with floppy shoelaces. Instead of rocky ledges to rest upon, they have a couch. And that's not the gleam of a rat's eye in the moonlight. That's a lamp making our car keys glitter. That's why our car keys get stolen, killed, and hidden. Cats are at the mercy of their instincts, just as we are. But in our world, when we need to hunt down dinner, we do it on our smartphones. Cats still have to fulfill their instincts the old-fashioned way. So they still scope out their territory because their instincts tell them that these behaviors will lead to dinner. They still hunt their toys, even though they don't eat them. Of all our domesticated animals, Cats have changed the least, and certainly not in their survival instincts. What makes cats so prized in our civilization is their rodent hunting. We wouldn't even have a civilization if we didn't have cats safeguarding our food stores, would we? So of course cats stayed, the supreme predators they are. We've only moved cats indoors and opened cans for a century or so. They still have all their hunting instincts. They still exercise their hunting instincts. They still need to, and they want to. In the cat's natural environment, what they want is what they need. So they honestly never see anything wrong with going after what they want. If we do not have proper outlets for our cat's wants, if we do not respect these wants as their needs, our cat will misbehave. They can't help it, and it is our fault. A key way we will mess this up is when we think of our cat training as something we do to make the cat stop doing something. When what the cat is doing is something they have to do. So this is a totally no-win situation where the cat keeps insisting they have to and we keep insisting they don't. What we have to do if we are trying to change a cat's behavior is figure out first what they are asking for. What need are they expressing when they wrestle with those stereo wires or insist on sleeping in a window we don't want them sleeping in? And we have to accept that to meet the cat's needs, we might have to give a little on our own wants. Our cats have a need to play with things. If we don't like what they're playing with, Give them something better. Our cats have a need to observe the world around them. Windows are irresistible. We may prefer they look out the window 
that nothing is happening in. They are going to want to watch through a window where they see birds or chipmunks or even people going by on the sidewalk. We need to let the cat pick their window because they won't stop. Or how about the way people tell me, my cat keeps bugging me even though the food bowl is full? Well, chances are they're not asking for food. They're actually asking for attention or affection or something that's not food. We're making the mistake of saying, oh, the cat's annoying me, when we're wrong about what the cat is asking about. So many people are used to thinking of a pet as something who is supposed to obey them. That is why they get so exasperated with a cat and then complain that cats do not obey. But I see this as a plus. I don't have to figure out what my cat wants if I have enabled them to tell me what they want. By working on my communication with my cat, I tend to know what they want, what they are asking for, and then negotiate a way to give it to them. I don't have to guess. I have a pet who comes with their own instruction manual. This is a good thing because people also don't realize how much variation there is in different cats. In the same litter, there will be cats who need amusement a lot, cats who need special nap spots, and cats who want to watch us do interesting things. If we treated them all the same, none of these cats would get what they need. We must have communication channels so we know what our cat is asking for. It's not always what we think. We have this tendency to think that because our cat comes and asks for dinner and we pop open a can for them, we're done and our cat is done. But that is not so. Our cats still need to express their instincts. And the amazing part is how easily they can do this in our own home. They just need a little help from us. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more In a Perfect World. We'll be right back, right after these messages. Stay tuned. Molly, here's your dinner. (coughs) Zeus, that's not your food. Don't let that happen to your precious cat. Elevate your cat's eating experience with the Cat Tree Tray. The Cat Tree Tray keeps your cat's food off the floor and conveniently located on the cat tree. It's the perfect way to eat. It's a beautiful wrought iron tray that easily attaches to your cat tree and keeps dogs and other critters out of your cat's dish. A must for multi-pet households. There's a 6-inch tray for large bowls and a 4-inch tray for smaller bowls. Purchase your cat tree tray today. Go right now to CatTreeTray.com. That's CatTreeTray.com. C-A-T-T-R-E-E-T-R-A-Y.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. And we're back talking about how easy it is to not train our cats. We are starting to see why so many cat misbehaviors get started and why they go on for so long. In fact, most people try to fix this situation by making the situation worse. Of course, they don't do this on purpose. They think that if the cat gets some aversive feedback when they do that, they won't do that anymore. So the cat jumps up on the kitchen counter and we yell at them and they jump down. We think we have a working system. We do it again and again, even though it doesn't work. Because if it worked, we wouldn't have to keep doing it. Even faucets reach a limit where turning it off stops working and turning it off harder stops working too. With our cats, what we are really teaching them is that seeing them on our kitchen counters makes us crazy with rage. So they are careful not to let us see them on the counters. But they have not learned to stay off the counters. That's not what we've been teaching them. The way to actually teach our cat to stay off the kitchen counters is to understand territory the way cats see it. For instance... If we have been feeding the cat on the counter, this is not sending the signal for them to stay off the counters, is it? 
I understand that a lot of times we need to keep their food away from the dog or the baby, but if we expect them to see kitchen counters as two separate territories, we need to make them look like two separate territories. If we have a spot on the counter where we need to feed the cat, block that off. Put a mat on it. Put a line of canisters separating it from the rest of the counter. Let the cat know this is a different place than the rest of the counters. Then the cat will understand one of them is their territory and one of them is our territory where they shouldn't be going. We can't forget that cats aren't humans. We had to learn what kitchen counters were. So do cats. And the cat might simply be asking for a spot to hang out in, what I call a kitchen outpost. We have one of those little cat condos in front of our kitchen window, and the cats are welcome to sit there and watch me cook or watch my husband wash dishes or whatever they'd like to do because they want to be a part of our lives. If we create a safe spot for them to do this in, we won't be chasing them off of inappropriate spots. We will have given them their own. Likewise, we probably aren't telling them to stay off the counters in the right way. The thing to persuade cats is not anger. It is fear for them and disappointment. Like when I'm training a new kitten to stay off my counters, I suck in my breath when I see them there. Something awful could happen if they sit there. Then I carefully take them off the counter and put them in a safe spot for them. Then I pull out my cleaner, because we're going to want to do this anyway, and spray this wet, nasty-smelling cleaner all over the counter. Ooh, look what I've saved them from. So they get the idea that, whoa, you know, if they'd been sitting there a few minutes longer, that highly bad-smelling wet stuff could have gotten on them. They're safer in their spot, which we clean when they're off of it, obviously. So this is how we can create the correct mindset in our cats to make them want to stay off the counters, to please us because we're looking out for them, because they have their own spots that they're welcome to enjoy. There's a better picture shaping up now, isn't there? We understand how we can confuse and upset our cat when all we are trying to do is help both of us live together in harmony. If we give up the impossible task of getting our cat to do something they don't want to do and go after an achievable goal, like increasing our cat's comfort and affection for us, we both win. The beauty of this system is that we don't have to train the cat to do anything. The cat knows how to use their litter box. They just need it set up in a way which meshes with their instincts. The cat knows to stop eating when they are no longer hungry, so we can leave a dish out if we are going to be late. The cat knows they want to look out the window, We just need to give them that window and move the breakables. A great way to keep our cat occupied while we are gone is to hide one of our herbal cat toys, like the popular Mouser Mix, somewhere for the cat to find. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more In a Perfect World. We'll be right back, right after these messages. Stay tuned. I love cleaning the litter box, said no one ever. Luckily, there's World's Best Cat Litter, the litter that promises less mess with less litter. Only World's Best Cat Litter uses the concentrated power of corn to quickly trap odors in tight clumps. And quick clumping means you never have to chisel or scrape the box. Less cleanup with less wasted litter? That's a litter bit amazing. Save $2 on World's Best Cat Litter. Visit www.saveonworldsbest.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. And we're back talking about cat misbehavior and what we can do about it. Because in actuality, we do best training the cat by not training the cat, by doing things like cat proofing our home 
providing the proper stuff for them and being their friend, we're like 90% there in terms of how the cat is going to act will fit right in with what we expect them to do. And there aren't any broken objects or nasty surprises. I can't emphasize enough the fact that this is not a power struggle. We should give things to the cats. We want to make them happy. In fact, to me, this is one of the great benefits of cats. They thrive on spoiling. This is not the case with dogs. While a certain amount of love and care is, of course, important for dogs, we cannot often indulge ourselves without messing up the dog's head. If we do this in the wrong way, we can make the dog think they are supposed to be pack leader. And this can cause them anxiety. They try to boss around. They can get aggressive. They can get frustrated. And we just love and spoil them more and make the problem worse. This pitfall does not happen with cats. They thrive on being spoiled. Once upon a time, I was a bonsai gardener. These are the little miniature trees that you cultivate and shape to make them look like ancient trees that grow on rocks and things. I, I find it very interesting. And I had invested several years in this hobby when the place where I overwintered the trees got changed a dehumidifier was put in there, and I did not realize the devastating effect it would have. It killed all my trees. What I did instead was switch to rose gardening, and I found this suited me better because it's my nature to encourage and nurture and spoil, and roses thrive on this. To be a good rosarian, you encourage the flowers to be as big and bold as sassy as possible. As a bonsai gardener, you're constantly controlling and scaling back and restricting the tree. That apparently is not me. I'm more of a spoiler. And that is how we should see our relationship with our cats. Because when we spoil them, they spoil us. Then they interact with us more. They love us more. They're more responsive to our requests. This is how cats work. And it's a beautiful thing. So remember, if a cat feels neglected, they are. All cats will bloom when given more attention. But it's especially important if we are having trouble of some sort. A misbehaving cat can be begging for attention, even if the kind they get is bad. Switch it up and fuss over them for momentarily doing nothing, and we can see less distress and less upsetting behaviors. Because the message we have given to the cat is just sitting there, not getting in trouble, we love that. And they will want to do more things that make us happy. This is an incredible benefit to us. If we declare we are willing to share and we successfully convey this to the cat, then they are compelled to share with us, too. They will do what we ask when we do what they ask. Then they will stop misbehaving, because all their behaviors are now supported by their environment. Remember, our job is not to get the cat to obey. Our job is to make the cat happy. We can do that, can't we? We can enjoy doing that. I used to have a problem with my cat, Bubby, who wanted to get into the basement and explore. And I didn't want him to. It was dirty. It was dusty. He could get into trouble. He could knock stuff over. But he kept wanting to, and I kept finding my trips to the basement would be annoying because I would have to be constantly on the lookout for him. It turned into a game where he could see if he could outwit me, and he usually could. So I turned this around. I gave him the basement, but in a controlled way. I would summon him by calling out that we were going to play the basement game. And then when he showed up, I would let him in there. And then I would set a timer for like 10 minutes, and he would explore the basement under my supervision while we could 
talk amongst ourselves about the interesting things he was finding. I could get a few errands done that I was going to get done down there anyway. When the timer dinged, I would turn that into a game, too, where I would call him and he'd come rushing out from wherever he was, maybe playing a little hide-and-seek. But he learned this was fun, too, because then he would get a hug and we leave the basement together. And the importance of the timer is that I had nothing to do with this. This is what you do when the timer dings. You're supposed to leave the basement, and so he would. And the problem went away. When he knew I was going to have this special fun time in the basement with him, he stopped trying to get into the basement all the time when I was doing laundry or when I was getting ready to do some other errand. I had made him happy. We did it in a way that was fun for both of us. And now, I don't have that particular cat problem anymore. This is an approach that can work for us under so many different circumstances. But if we see the cat as someone who has to obey us, and if we see it as a power struggle where we lose if we give the cat what they want, we will not have this incredible advantage. We will be missing out on cat closeness. Don't let stress lead to cat misbehavior help our cat discharge that abundant energy. It only takes about 10 minutes to wear them out, and that's what they need fairly often. For a bit of help, check out the herbal cat toys in our wayofcats.com website shop. That's our show for today. Tune in next time on this same cat channel for more about how things work in a perfect world. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand only on PetLifeRadio.com.